the data and suggest that you're enjoying a competitive advantage. What do you say to that? There's a lot of factors that go into a race and how how well you do. And the biggest change for me is that I'm happy. And sophomore year, um, where I had my best times competing with the men, I was miserable. And so having that be lifted is incredibly relieving and allows me to put my all into training, into racing. Yeah. So he can put his all into it now. He's ball di he's balls deep and swimming. Joining me now, Mike Slater. Obviously, we know Mike Slater right here at the first. He has a special this Friday on mental health. We have a mental health crisis. He's also um, somebody who speaks out against this stuff a lot. Mike, all right, in all seriousness, every single person watching looks at that, and they know what they're seeing. They know it's not right. They know it's not normal. They know it's not good for a country. Setting aside women's sports, this is bad for society, yet this stuff continues apace. Why? Uh, let me, I'll answer that. Let me speak to him first. He doesn't care about anything except him. So back in the day, we used to all agree and worship God. God was the center of our lives, the center of our focus, the center of our culture. Remove God, and now we have this empty void, and everybody's filled it with the self. So all he's doing is worshiping self. Notice the question was, do you have an advantage in swimming? And his answer was, I feel happy. That's all that matters is how I feel. There's nothing about truth no objective standards, nothing outside of me, and that includes other people. Other people don't matter. It's all about me and how I feel. And that is a mental health, that is a major problem for the entire country right now. It's just flaming narcissism and selfishness, and that's a perfect example right there. Well, look, I, I don't disagree with you at all, Mike, but I'm the most selfish human being on the planet, and I don't <laughs> want to chop my penis off and go swim with a bunch of women. It's got to be deeper than that, right? It is a de it's, it's a depth of narcissism I don't think we've ever seen, right? I mean, I, I don't know, like, like how much worse can it get than this? And now it's like a, it's a whole movement that's embraced by everyone. Actually, I think last time we talked, Jesse, I talked about how uh, the religion of the day is moral therapeutic deism. That's that's what everyone believes in, and and the most important principle is to be nice, right? You must be nice at all times. So that reporter can never question him on what he says because that would be uh, mean. I don't want to step on any toes. I don't want any feelings. Yeah. And I think that's why everyone else is embracing it just because they don't want to be mean at all. They got to be the nice guy at all times. So people like this are getting away with it when in the past they wouldn't have because most people would have been like you. Like I like to look at this stuff and try to think how my grandpa would have responded. Like my grandpa was like, like a regular guy, like a roofer. Like, like he wouldn't have like put up with this. And you know who else wouldn't have put up with this? The parents of the other swimmers. Right? Like the way this would have been resolved 50 years ago, 20 years ago, is all the dads on the women's swim team would have stood at the door of the pool and said, sorry, Will, or you can't swim against our daughters. And that would have been the end of it. But we can't do that anymore because it's not nice. So everyone gets away with it and madness wins. So fathers, I, I mean, I do believe fathers still love their daughters, but they won't do this. What is it? Why, Mike? Is it that sweet scholarship yeah. money? Is it social shame? Why won't a father stand up for his daughter? Oh, wow, that's such a good question. There's no scholarships in the Ivy League, so it's not money. No, none. the girls didn't stand up. Remember, there was like one girl on the podium from Texas who didn't applaud. That's all she did. She didn't boo. She just didn't applaud. And she was, uh, you know, criticized for it. Not one dad stood up. This entire seat, now there wasn't a dad who's, who's put a stop to it, not one. Like that is so pathetic in every way. It's unbelievable. Where are the dads at the schools where, where uh, drag queens are coming in and reading to kids? Like if I could get one interview in the whole world, it would be a dad who actively brings his child to a library to have a drag queen story hour. Like who are you? But also, who are the dads who aren't stopping it? It's unbelievable. And it's maybe not that different from the police who stood outside of the elementary school, whatever, right? Like, it's a total lack of courage 
from men across our entire country that men are not even willing to protect their children from this insanity around them. And it, it's seen in many different ways. Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History. Che Guevara, the latest episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.